alongside uh, explaining many of the issues. But today I just want to talk about the county itself as it is. While we point uh, fingers to each other and especially to His Excellency the Governor, I think it's important to understand Nairobi as it stands today. After the Committee on Pending Bills, Nairobi had bills of 60 billion pending bills. After the committee audited, they were able to get to 23 billion. The highest uh, debt uh, that Nairobi has, or those who own Nairobi, is also the national government, which has accumulated so much in terms of rates. And therefore, for me, the best the national government and the leaders of Nairobi can do is to sit down together and ask themselves, while you own Nairobi, approximately 100 billion. How do we sit down in terms of these rates and other issues for us to come to a consensus that we owe you 100 billion, but we can take this and you can remain with this? I think it is very important. The other issue I know most of uh, the members are talking about is roads. And I think in the last two years, uh, as much as we want to point fingers, uh, the governor has been able to do 120 kilometers. That is tarmac. And they have partnered so well with Kura. And why I'm saying this is because I've looked at what is in the assembly, what the assembly passed. Kura was paid 800 million to give them equipment to deal with these roads. So you find most of the relationship is a relationship that they have to work with the national government. In terms of the medical procurement equipment that they are talking about, by the way, today, Pumwani is able to give oxygen to Kiambu and even to Eastern. When you look at Eastern and Central, I think Pumwani is doing very well at the moment. It is able to, you are able to come there and buy oxygen if you want. So for me, as, as, they, as they, we get into the politics, let us look at the issues so that when we are talking about giving services to Nairobi, we are able to say, Yes, we have challenges. And to be very honest, this is the only governor who is dealing with first, where we have a national government. Secondly, we have international institutions in that city. Thirdly, we have six million plus who walk in and walk out. Now, when you come to the issues of rates, today, if we go and pass a law in this assembly, which we can, and tell Nairobians, we have changed the bylaws of 1980s, and going forward, we can collect this revenue. The first cry will come from the national government. And because we've been holding on it, because we are saying Nairobians are suffering, even if you want to come in and say you want to collect more revenue for national government, it is so difficult because the same people you're going to tax are same Nairobians who are suffering. And we've been holding on this policy for a while trying to do public participation to agree what's the best rate. Because that is where Nairobi can collect also revenue. When you look at the issue of uh, Bagadi, today Bagadi is able, with their renal uh, dialysis uh, sector section, they are able to have at least people coming from Kenyatta going to Bagadi, six in a day, they are able to give that service. So for me, while we push, let us not forget the other day, KRA was paid $3 billion. And these are debts that were there before. So Nairobi is very unique because of the debts that were there during the mayor's time, during the clerk's time, before we even came into the new constitution and the new government. And I just want to say this. There's an issue on the insurance, and I know it passed here, and I know we questioned the governor. And it was an open tender, and in the end, it passed and we agreed that yes, it was a tender that was done during the previous regime. And he needed to have just continued with the same for his own workers. So I think it is also important for my members, even those in parliament, honestly, come and look at the documents before we start again bashing each other on media, bashing without having all the facts. I went to the Senate and I pleaded with them come to the assembly and get to know exactly what is happening. We know very well there was a time even our president stayed without a cabinet. We know. And so now when we talk to the governor about the cabinet, 
So far, he has eight. And, you know, the problem is the law. So if the Senate wants to help us, is look, the, the law does not say it is a must, you have 10. The law says maximum 10. So you can decide to put your executive together and some of the dockets together and decide, I just want to have five, but I'll have more chief officers. Because it is the chief officers who are the IE holders of each of those dockets. So you can decide to have more chief officers than the CECs. So it is, it's a matter of how the law has been structured. And the governor plays within that law. So if they feel you need 10, they need to look at the law and help us to carve it. So that you say it is 10 and you cannot have less or have more. The issue of the deputy governor, I have said many times, we've stayed here. I know West Pokot are also having the same. They even went to the Senate. At least West Pokot theirs is on salary and he's where? In the U.S. But here, we have no deputy governor, and there's no vacuum because the governor can write a letter and decide, see, see, so and so can be acting. You know, again, it's a lacuna in the law that the Senate has to look at. So when we are doing all this, I just want to really request that some of the things we speak about, in this county they've received, I know we passed on the floor of the House, 2017, 2018, 15 billion is what we received from the Senate. That is what has come again. So in total, in governor's regime, I think he has only received, if I'm not wrong, 31 billion, 196, 200. If I'm not wrong, if I've looked exactly to what I saw within the documents that came to this assembly. So for me, I would want us to also look at Nairobi, and I am pleading with the national government, let us look at Nairobi differently. We cannot uh, look at Nairobi the way we are looking at these other counties. This is a county where you have to work, walk a journey together with the national government. And I think they have a very good governor who can reciprocate and work if they want. He has handed so many things over. I know there are pending bills. I know the minister has told us we must pay the pending bills. They are working on it so that we go back on the pending bills of the normal Manainchi. There are those who supplied 500, 200, a million, 5 million, 10 million. Let us look at that list. Let us clear those ones. And I think that is what his team is doing. And then now we will go, because we have some legal fee here that goes to three to four billion. So how do you pay four people four billion shillings? It's not fair. So we are saying as much as the legal fees are very high, let's first go back to the small Mwanaichi. Let's pay the small Mwanaichi so that we see that replica coming into the economy where we feel indeed there is a crunch in the country. So for me, I just want to say, this is a county where, for the first time in two years, the executive, even they are paid before even us, on the 25th, their salaries are paid. You've never seen a mgomo of any of them. So they, 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 yes, there are some weaknesses, but let us appreciate. Governor Mike Sonko has really tried. And indeed, as I said, coming back here, I was coming to stand with him. And I'll stand with him. I'll stand with him in prayers, I'll stand with him in anything that I feel here we are not doing right. Where he's going wrong, we'll sit down with him and tell him, look, Governor, here, no. But where things are moving and we want to try to move them, definitely I'm going to stand with Governor Songo. All right, Madam Speaker, just one question from me here. We appreciate that perhaps you're still working on the 1980s regulations and artists, uh, taxes and so on. But away from what has been said, it has been claimed that the revenue collected in Nairobi 